Hello, my name is Adam Kirander and I'm a chemical physicist at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland. On the 9th of November 1989, I was glued to the television at home in Sweden. My parents had left Poland 20 years earlier, so the events unfolding in Berlin that night had a special meaning to us. As a child, I loved programming my Commodore computer and playing with a chemistry kit. Fortunately, I'm still doing the same thing, more or less. We are breaking the wall to the quantum world using X-ray free electron lasers to reveal the motion of atoms and molecules. To see individual atoms, we need light with a wavelength a thousand times shorter than that of normal visible light. This wall fell as a consequence of Wilhelm Röntgen's discovery of X-rays in the late 19th century, which led to iconic images of crystals and the DNA double helix. The beauty of these still images belies a central limitation. Matter is in constant motion. To see what molecules do and molecular machines do, we need to see how the atoms are moving. The challenge is that the motion of atoms occurs on a femtosecond time scale. A femtosecond is a millionth of a millionth of a millisecond, a brief moment in time much shorter than any of our normal everyday experiences. This second wall was broken by X-ray free electron lasers, linear accelerators where electrons acquire nearly the speed of light and are made to radiate X-rays in very short bursts, sufficiently short to capture the motion of atoms and even, as we shall see, the motion of electrons inside molecules. Using X-ray free electron lasers, we've been able to measure the shape of an excited molecule, the distances and angles between the atoms, and we've been able to do this as a function of time, nailing down the important details of atomic motion in a molecule. We've also been able to track the motion of atoms during a light-induced chemical reaction, closely related to the formation of vitamin D in our skin. When this cyclic molecule, known as 1,3-cyclohexadiene, absorbs light, it sets the atoms in motion, which leads to the breaking of a chemical bond between two of the atoms, creating a different linear molecule. Our measurements reveal multiple reaction paths that the molecule can explore simultaneously, demonstrating the quantum nature of the atomic world. Very recently, we were able to fine-tune our experiments even more, to capture not just the motion of the atoms, but to see how the electrons in the molecule rearrange when the molecule absorbs light. The process of absorbing energy from visible light, which shakes the electrons in the molecule into different arrangements, a different quantum state, is a fundamental process that underpins photosynthesis which feeds life on this planet, and human vision. In our proof of principle experiments, we watched how one electron jumped into an excited orbital. By looking immediately after the absorption event, before the atoms had a chance to move, we were able to capture the almost instantaneous rearrangement of electron density. Our work may have many different benefits to society. Atomic level engineering may allow us to minimize use of resources and maximize efficiency. It may even allow us to perform feats impossible in the macroscopic world, notably quantum computing. Designing light-driven machines will be greatly helped by being able to see what they do and how they do it. And this is something that X-ray free electron lasers may help us accomplish. This is only the beginning. Atoms and molecules do not just inhabit the spatial and temporal domain. We must also map their properties in the energy domain and track sensitive quantum properties such as interference effects. In the coming decade, we will learn to exploit the laser properties of X-ray lasers better, see developments that close the gap to spectroscopy and measurements that break the femtosecond barrier. Ultimately, multidimensional measurements will provide a full picture of molecular dynamics.
my six-year-old, totally buys into the idea of atoms as pieces of Lego to build great molecular machinery from. But he's disappointed that although we have lasers, we do not yet have lightsabers.